Please rise. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had, gone a, a, we had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb sled, led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living, 
and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoke any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death, and he was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. take refuge let me never be put to shame in your justice rescue me into your hands I commend my spirit you will redeem me O Lord O faithful God foes I am an object of reproach a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends they who see me abroad flee from me I am forgotten like the unremembered dead I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your heart.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he had suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. became obedient to the point of death, <coughs> even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Praise to you. the passion you will take the mark the sign of the sea crowd the lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord jesus went out with his disciples across the kidron valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered judas his betrayer also knew the place because jesus had often met there with his disciples so Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, For whom are you looking? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. And Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said, I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas, who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus, but Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then, he made who, then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, you are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. 
Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and, were, and they were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him. I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gathered, and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, we do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? Then he had said this. He again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him, so Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. 
When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement. In Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it will be. In order that this passage of scripture might be fulfilled, it said, They divided my garment among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clophus, and Mary of Magdala, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it, not a bone of it will be broken. And again another passage, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who'd first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb 
was closed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. If you wish to follow after me, Jesus said, take up your cross. Every one of us here has a cross. Maybe you buried someone you love recently. Maybe you have a child who is sick in the hospital. Maybe fill in the blank. Every one of us bears a cross. And sometimes that cross is so heavy, things look very dark. It was a blind preacher from Scotland, George Matheson in the 19th century, who put it this way. There are times when everything looks very dark to me, so dark that I have to wait before I have hope. Waiting with hope is very difficult, but true patience is expressed when we must even wait for hope. When we see no hint of success, yet refuse to despair, when we see nothing but darkness of night through our window, yet keep the shutters open because stars may appear in the sky, and when we have an empty place in our heart, yet will not allow it to be filled with anything less than God's best, that is the greatest kind of patience in the universe. It is the story of Job in the midst of the storm, Abraham on the road to Moriah, Moses in the desert of Midian, and the Son of Man in the Garden of Gethsemane. Who waited with faith? Not many. When they saw the Master crucified, they thought it was over. And they grieved terribly. But there was one, one woman of faith who kept the faith at the foot of the cross. And she had joy and hope in the midst of her pain. The sword that was thrust mystically, spiritually through her heart. The same preacher, George Matheson, wrote this poem called Joy Through Pain. O love that wilt not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. O joy that seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not vain, that morn shall tearless be. O cross that liftest up my head, I dare not ask to hide from thee. I lay in dust life's glory dead, and from the ground there blossoms red, life that shall endless be. Hope in the midst of the pain. St. Thomas More, the great Catholic of the 1500s, who lost his life at the hands of his best friend, King Henry, who had become very corrupt, 
He wrote this. St. Thomas More said, when Christ comes back to his apostles for the third time, there they are buried in sleep. Now he's talking about the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember, they had fallen asleep. I'd have fallen asleep. They had four glasses of wine at the Seder supper, right? There's four cups that are offered. Now maybe they didn't drink all of it. Maybe they just shared those cups, I don't know, but I'd have fallen asleep. Three times Jesus asked them to pray with him. And this is what Sir Thomas More said. Judas the traitor at the same time was so wide awake and intent on betraying the Lord that the very idea of sleep never entered his mind. Does not this contrast between the traitor and the apostles present to us a clear and sharp mirror image, as it were, a sad and terrible view of what has happened through the ages, from those times even to our own. I think what St. Thomas More was trying to say is that many of us who count ourselves believers are really asleep when the powers of evil are wide awake and active. St. Gregory Nazianzen, a great bishop of the early church, looked at this scene and said, if you are a Simon of Cyrene, take up the cross and follow Christ. If you're cruci crucified beside him like one of the thieves, now like the good thief, acknowledge your God. For your sake and because of your sin, Christ himself was regarded a sinner. For his sake, therefore, you must cease to sin. Worship him who was hung on the cross because of you, even if you're hanging there yourself. Derive some benefit from the very shame. Then enter paradise with Jesus and discover how far you have fallen. Contemplate the glories there and leave the other scoffing thief to die outside. If you're a Joseph of Arimathea, go to the one who ordered his crucifixion and ask for Christ's body. If you are a Nicodemus like the man who worshiped God by night, bring spices and prepare Christ's body for burial. If you are one of the Marys or Salome or Joanna, weep, weep in the early morning and be the first to see the stone rolled back. There's a great hymn from the early church called Vexilla Regis, the standard of the king, the flag of Christ. And this is how it goes. Behold the standard of our king. The cross gleams forth its mystery. On it, the Son of God as man atoned on earth for sinners all. His side was pierced by cruel lance that drew out water with his blood to cleanse our souls from every stain and nourish them with its pure stream. O tree that shines with beauty rare and ennobled by Christ's precious blood, he chose you as the royal bed to rest his sacred limbs in death. O oh, blessed were your rugged arms from which the whole world's ransom hung. You bore the weight of sacrifice that snatched from greedy hell its prey. Hail, holy altar, victim, hail. For all the glory of that cross by which life chose and welcomed death and dying gave us life once more. Hail, holy cross, our only hope. Wash all our guilt and crimes away. Increase our grace while we adore in honor of your victory forever and ever. Amen.
Please rise. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all nations, watch over the works of your mercy so that your church spread throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop John and for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide their ears of their innermost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, who makes your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, who gathers what is scattered 
and keeps together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you, come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all heirs, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, 
granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand is every human heart, the rights of peoples look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority, and throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion, and through your gift be made secure, through Christ our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated until the cross comes before you. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Okay, raise it up high. Raise it up high. Everybody, all kneel. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world.
please join in singing during the veneration. Number 434 in your red worship hymnals, O Sacred Head Surrounded. Number 434.
Please turn to number 433 in your hymnals, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <coughs> Yeah. 
Please turn to your missalette, number 159, Were You There?
Please join in, Jesus, remember me.
Please turn in your missalat to number 155, another version of When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. Oh, nobody else could walk it for him. He had to walk it by himself. Please join in number 634, Take Up Your Cross.
Once more, Jesus, remember me. Now that you have reverenced the splinter from the cross on which our Savior died for us and shed his blood, let us stand now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power Let us kneel.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in our sung prayer of communion with number 600 in your worship books. What wondrous love is this, number 600.
Almighty and ever-living God, you have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessings, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. He gave it to me. <laughs> Thank you. I told it there should have been an easier way, but yes. that's okay. All right. Thank you. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be praying. 